It's a gray and overcast early fall day here in Michigan. I absolutely love autumn and fall. I love the colors. I love the season. I love the just the smell of the leaves. I don't know how to explain it. There's a, there's a dryness to the air, um, even though it rains a lot. It's just different. Spring is a time of rebirth, but it's also a time of mud and wetness. And fall is, it's almost like nature is prepping the world, kind of buttoning it all up in preparation for winter. Maybe, maybe I have such good memories of fall because that was when I went back to school and got to see all my school friends. I don't know, it's just fall has always had a very special time for me. Today, being such a gray day, I thought it would be a good time to take the Mamiya C220 out with a roll of black and white Kodak Plus X film. What I'm thinking of is up the road a little ways here and off onto a side road, there's a few old and dilapidated buildings and what better subject on a gray overcast day with black and white film in a gray package would be some dilapidated buildings. One of the buildings that I had spotted that was dilapidated and falling down, there was a barn and a house and all, it looks like it's still in use because I drove by and there were cars. So we decided not to go there. Where I've come instead is actually to this older cemetery. And that's maybe a morbid attraction of mine. I do enjoy history and older cemeteries. Driving through and looking, I did see this tree, how that branch is just leaning up against the tree. And I thought with the Mamiya, with that 80 millimeter lens, the medium format, the shallow depth of field, we could do something pretty intriguing with this. So let's get this roll of Plus X into the Mamiya C220. Remove the take-up spool. This is the spool from the last roll of film that was in there. So we'll get that set here to take up. Right there. You remove this, get rid of it. The flap. Put the roll of film in. in. It's right into that slot and that take up. We start winding the film through. If we look really close, we can see there's red dots, one right here and one right here. I don't know if that actually shows up, but we're going to line up an arrow on this paper backing in that film with those dots. Right there. So everything knows where to start. Make sure our camera's set to 120 right here. Close the back up and I'm gonna turn this to lock it. Little red dot. So if we turn it to where it's 90 degrees this way, it's locked. Now we will wind the film until the film counter goes to one. Right there, film counter's at one. Remove the lens cap and we are set. There's a monument marker behind this view through this opening, and it's beautifully lit. So I see that, so I can see focused on the tree and have the marker be out of focus in the background. And I can also see the marker being in focus and have the tree be out of focus in the foreground. I'm gonna use my light meter app. We're gonna set the ISO from 200, which was the Foma pan that I shot before, to our 125 which is the ISO of this. And then we're simply gonna look at our scene. We can see it right there, hit our measure, and there we go. So we're, if I shoot at F2.8, I'm gonna be at about a 125th of a second. So let's set that up. We'll set the shutter speed right here to 125th of a second. Leave our aperture set there at F2.8. Remind me where I set my glasses. Cock that shutter. This first one, I'm focused on the tree. Then approach a little closer. I'm gonna do one focused on the monument in the back. Cock the shutter, focus to that monument. Right there.
I'm going to take a quick look to see if there's anything else worth photographing as long as we're right here. I wanted to show you this. Hopefully this shows up on the video. Thomas Fitzgerald departed this life December 18th, 1882, aged 54 years. This is a reminder for each of us that life is precious and life is short. It was the saying, carpe diem, seize the day, seize the day. Don't do so much that you miss out on the beauty that is life. Some of you eagle-eyed folk may have noticed that I was wearing a little pin, a little camera pin, and I don't have it right now. It was actually a what I thought was a genius idea that I had. I affixed a little piece of steel to the back of the Rode Wireless Go microphone. That camera pin was actually a magnet and was holding the Rode microphone under my sweater. Well, the sweater was a little too thick, and on my way back to the car, it must have fallen off. I noticed that the microphone had slid down inside my sweater. I just spent about 10 minutes looking for it, and I guess it's a gift to the cemetery. In this little town of Emmett, there used to be a gentleman's club by the name of Bisco's. Now, I don't know why they call these places gentleman's club, because no gentleman I know would ever attend a place like this, but basically, it was a strip club. The story always was that the strip club had a one-legged stripper. I have no idea if that was true or not, but it is a funny story. Yeah, this is just as amazing as I had hoped with some of the old building here and all. Let's get some shots. That uses up our last exposure on this roll of black and white. Gonna go back home and see what develops. off into a vacant parking lot to take the GoPro off the car, you know, for the B-roll shots, the driving shots, and I moved the bag around so I could put the GoPro camera back in the bag. My little camera, my little magnet was laying on the car seat. I didn't lose it after all. <laughs> 